A composite slab is made up of three layers, 15 centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 12 centimeters thickness. The first layer of material with thermal conductivity 1.45 for 60% of the area, and the rest is of the material with conductivity of 2.5 watts per meter Kelvin. Full stop. The second layer is made of material with conductivity of 12 and a half watts per meter Kelvin for 50% of the area. Okay and of material with conductivity 18 and a half watts per meter Kelvin is used for the other 50 percent. Okay, I will tell you what uh, what do we mean by 50 percent of the area and all, 60 percent of the area and all. I will just show you. Uh, it's uh, coming after this slide. Okay. The third layer is of single material of thermal conductivity of 0 0.76 watts per meter Kelvin. This is a complete area. It's 100 percent of the area. I will tell you uh, in the next video, full stop. The slab. The slab the slab is exposed on one side to warm air at 26 degrees Celsius and to cold air at minus 20 degrees Celsius on the other side. Full stop. The convection coefficients are 15 and 20 watts per meter square Kelvin. See, this is H. This is H. Okay, 15 and 20. Okay, these are conductivities. These are conductivities. So, you should remember K unit of thermal conductivity is watts per meter Kelvin, okay? And H, its unit is watts per meter square Kelvin, okay? So whatever, uh, whatever it, uh, whatever it has a name in the numerical, you should not get confused. You should look at the unit, so you will have an idea what the numerical is talking about. Means what kind of value it has given in the numerical, to which particular nomenclature it persists, okay? So. Let's uh, go ahead. Coefficients are 15 and 20 watts per meter square Kelvin. So I have already told you, uh, looking at the unit, it is just the H. And on the inside and outside, uh, respectively. Okay, So it is HI and HO. If you talk about inside, uh, you know, suffix I for inside and O for the outside. Okay, Full stop. Determine the heat flow and the interface temperatures. Okay, That's an interesting thing, the interface temperatures and the heat flow. Heat flow, definitely, you all know that. First of all, you need to calculate the resistances. You need to reciprocate. You will get U, and then Q will be U A delta T. So, guys, this is what we need to do in every numerical, in all the numerical which you will come across. Okay. So, let's talk about its solution. This is part one of the solution. Okay. We will definitely go for the second part of the solution. Okay. So, see, as I was already telling you. As I was already uh, telling you that this is the 40 percent, okay? This is the 50 percent, this is the 50 percent, and this is the 60 percent. Now, what do I mean by 50 percent, 60 percent, and all those things? See, 40 percent. See, if this particular height, if this particular height is being actually, suppose this is the area, okay? If this area is now being divided, suppose, uh, okay? Let me first draw it. Suppose if this is the isometric view, right? It's better I can uh, I make a drawing, okay? If this is an isometric view of a wall, and I'm telling you that a material having K1 occupies 60 percent of the area. Suppose this is K1, okay? It, it should be a bit more, okay? So this is 60 percent of the area. So this has a thermal conductivity K1, and the remaining of the material is having thermal conductivity K2, which occupies 40 percent of the area. So this is K2. So this occupies 60% of area. This occupies 40% of area. Okay, this was all about. So if you talk about 50%, the same thing will come again. I'm drawing an isometric view. Okay, 50% here. So this is 50%. This is having K1. And this is 50% once again. So this is having K2. So the area is 50% point, point 0.5 here and this is 0 0.5 here okay so this was the concept which i wanted to explain you okay so this is basically this is a parallel resistance equivalent you need to find out this is again a parallel resistance equivalent you need to find out and this is a series so heat will actually come and encounter this resistance first okay this is a convective resistance Okay, then it will come across this parallel duo. Okay, you need to calculate the equivalent resistance for this. 
then the heat will come into this duo this is again in parallel okay and then it will come to this the e portion okay it will be in series everything is in series only thing is this this and this duo are in parallel to each other and if you connect them in series you need to calculate the equivalent resistance and then this is the second convection okay so here it is h2 here it is h1 this is 26 this is minus 20 so how you do it this is the simple concept see r equivalent 1 r equivalent 2 so this is the r convection 1 this is 1 by h okay this is r a r a c in terms of uh, r conduction is l by k a and area is 0 0.6 0 0.6 of 1 suppose 60 percent okay so the complete total will be 100 percent so it is 0 0.6 so area is 0 0.6 so here okay so this is how you will calculate r b r b is 40 percent okay then the r c the r c is coming up this is the this is the c part so the c part will be coming as it is having the area of 50 percent so this rc will have the area of 0.5 okay now the rd the rd will also have an area of 0.5 because they are sharing 50 percent of the area the duo is sharing the 50 percent of the area and then this has the complete area so this is one you can see it's one okay so you have calculated and this is the convection once again the external convection resistance so this is basically again one by h a okay so this is done so if you calculate all these then you will come to know see this is the r equivalent this is r equivalent to okay so you know how to calculate the parallel with parallel resistances okay so you add up all these you add up all these you will get this value then you know delta t i have already explained you the format that is q is equals to delta t by r okay so this is that formula so you will get the amount of heat transferred okay so you will get the amount of heat transferred here okay now for the interface for the interface what you need to do is you know this is a steady state this is a steady state okay this is a steady state so the steady state thing what what happens in a steady state the heat which is coming in here okay the heat that is going out here will be actually same in the magnitude because it is not changing okay so since it is not changing so in every interface okay so in every interface you will have like suppose if there are two walls uh, if there are two components suppose if this is t1 this is t2 and suppose this is t3 so the q that is entering here will be equal to the q that is exiting okay so q is equals to first of all it is like t1 minus t2 by r okay then the same q will come here then it will be t2 minus t3 by r so whichever is unknown you can calculate so you just first calculate q which we have already calculated okay see delta t2 by r1 calculate t1 okay done and then you can calculate t2 from here from the next lab then you can calculate t3 from here this equation with the same thing it's going on then you can calculate t from t4 from this equation okay so the heat remains same just you need to calculate the interface temperatures with the same format okay with the same format that's it